and uh, we are on to the PWA aspect of the show. So Nicola demoed at the beginning about the PWAs, and so we have Judo on the call. So I just need to push a few magic buttons here, and we can get Judo on. So an app manifest, yeah, that just is like information about your app. So your app name, app icons, description, that sort of thing. And that is used like when you oh, actually no. install your PWA. All right, so I can just copy this now. Yep. Into my app. So it says copy to manifest.json. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go to my public folder because that's where this app is served from. That's where my index file is. So oh. I'm just going to right click new file manifest.json, paste it in there. One thing I noticed that I have to do here um, is I have to change this URL to be a relative URL because I'm using yeah. localhost and I'm also hosting this on different places. Exactly. So if I want to make sure that this works on everywhere I'm hosting this, I'm just going to do a, rel a relative path. Yep. This. Um, that's it. But Peter Builder actually can also generate things like images for me and all these different things. I noticed yeah. like if I upload like an image here, choose file like this. Submit, which I, I just noticed, discovered this yesterday. It generates all the different sizes for me yeah, for that yeah, image and just adds it to that manifest, which is yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now that I've added this, oh, I forgot to add this to my index page. So if right. I go to my yep. index page and then index. So this link is just says this is a manifest and this is where you can find it. So that's the browser knows. Yeah, exactly. Where it is. Yeah. So now if I go back to my app, I'm going to go through localhost here. Um, and then one thing I you know you can do, you can actually go to the application in the DevTools, and you can actually see the manifest here. Yes. You can actually see, and you can actually look at this. No resource found. Let's refresh <laughs> it one more time. Yeah, that seems like an edge thing. I'm not quite sure what that is. Oh, there is. it is. So now oh, it's found. Yeah, there I just have to refresh. And... That's it. So now it says I don't have a service worker. And if I go back to Peter Web Builder, let me see if I can rerun this real quick. Sure. Uh, and then so it shows that. Oops. I need to rerun it again. Hopefully it's going to pick up. Okay. So it picked up that manifest. So it gave me that 40 points. Yep. Yep. You exactly. know, it's like gamification. You got to get all the points. Yeah. So next yeah. thing I need to do is get a service worker. So what is a service worker? Yeah, so a service worker basically is a thing that sits between your web app and the internet at large. So it can like intercept requests that you do from your web app. And then it could say, add those things to the cache or serve them from the cache. So it's it's basically a way to help you work offline or even just get you better performance. Right, so if I want to work offline, I think the one we used yesterday was the cache first network when we're going through this. Yeah, right? that's right. And basically what that one's going to do is uh, after you visit different pages or do requests, it's going to add those things to the cache. So the next time you you try to access them, it can serve them from the cache first. And if the ca if it's not in the cache, then it just reaches out to the network. So one thing I noticed after we added this is this was also caching all the graph calls, which I didn't want to do mm -hmm. that. So yeah. What I did is I actually added another route to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, by default, it's going to cache everything there because it's it's that regex just matching yeah. all routes. But yeah, if, so yeah, exactly. What you did there is just say, oh, OK, if it's going to graph.microsoft.com, then just reach out to the network and skip the cache. Yeah. And then finally, because we're using this React uh, you know, startup code, we already had the code to, uh, to register the um, the service, the service worker. worker. So if I go back mm -hmm. to my index page, it had this helpful comment saying, if you want to register a service worker, just change just this say to register. register. Yeah. And then that should have done it, I think. So if I go back here to this page now, uh, there it is. Uh, you can see, I can go back to service worker and I can see that the service worker is registered cool. and says I can go and I can update it. I can do what all kinds of things. Uh, and let me see here real quick. We also I have the app installed, but let me uninstall it because I forgot to do that before this. <laughs> sure, sure. There you go. So if I refresh this now, mm -hmm. there it is. Now I can install this app. Um, and then you have a helpful um, install button that I can add to this. If I go to Pito Builder, yes. now if I go back to Pito Builder and I can rerun this, it should hopefully pick this up again. Now let's see. Maybe. 
Yeah, uh, it's taking a bit of time. There it is. So I have the 35 okay, points, cool. so I'm at 95. Yep. Um, a couple of things I can do now here. I can add this install PWA web component. Now I'm running out of time, so I'm not gonna actually gonna do it. Sure. But to show people what it does, mm -hmm. it actually is just this web component that you can install with npm import or just mm -hmm. through using the CDN here. Yep. And it picks up that manifest, right? Yeah, it looks at your manifest and then gives you a nice kind of branded install experience, right? Because you can install PWAs just from the browser, but um, this gives you kind of like your app's branding around the install. So it's a pretty nifty thing. Yeah, so here it is. This, this is a finished version that we have. So it has this yeah. install button already in there. Yep. And it was just the one line of code to add it in there. And just yep. here's the description. Yeah, and just yeah. a side note there too. So you can add like images to your manifest to say like these are the screenshots of my app, and and then um, that install button will pick that up and actually show like um, some screenshots during that install thing there too. So it's pretty cool. So here's the app now running as a as a app on my device, and if I go to my yeah. start menu, which is on a different screen, you'll see I'll see you'll see the big logo of the moderator. So it looks and acts like a, a regular application. Yeah, yeah. And one thing I did that you don't know about is I actually add this as a Android app as well. So if I go back you to did. my hub, cool. I did. Actually, let's start this again. So HTTPS. Yeah, and while you're doing that, that's one of the cool things about PWA Builder. That's actually how I first found PWA Builder before coming to Microsoft is you can package your PWAs for app stores. And uh, yeah. I think that's a pretty cool thing. So yeah, you can do... Android store, you can do the Samsung store, the Windows store, Mac OS mm -hmm. store. So I yeah. did it for Android, so I just clicked yes. it. Okay. And what I didn't cool. realize what this does, it actually signs it for the store for you. So it actually uses the Play Store. Yeah, like yeah so this is something new. Um, yeah, this is something new where it's basically, we give you the very thing that you just, it's like one file you can submit to uh, the Google Play Store. And usually you're in the store within like 24 hours. So it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, so it's downloaded it here. So let me open okay. this up and extract it real quick. Extract. There it is. Here. Yeah, so that APK file there, moderator-sign.apk. Yeah. That's the thing you can actually just submit to the store. To the, to the Play Store and it will show up in people's store. Yeah. So I can actually drag this over to the emulator. Oh, super cool. I didn't know that too. And now there it is. Hey, so it awesome. installed it for me. So, uh, Okay, hold it, and I can put it here. And then <laughs> yeah. if I launch it, and there it is. That's there it is. Aww. We have and some mobile work we have to do, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and like that that, uh, that top bar with the address bar there, that can be removed too. I think you just have to like um, so have some digital asset link. Uh, to, yeah, to I was looking that. at this in this mm -hmm. MD file. It yes. was saying you can follow this process here. Mm -hmm. And you just add exactly. that file to your web server, and then yep. that will be gone. So this yeah, and then the address here. bar disappears. Yep, yeah. exactly. So it will just be like a regular app. Yeah, so there it is. Yeah. So it runs Very like a, cool. an Android app. Yeah, awesome. I think I, s I saw a question in the chat earlier that says this: What if I already have a manifest.json for Teams? Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, so it's a good question. That those are two different things. Um, so one obviously for for PWAs has uh, information specific to PWAs and and. The same is true, of course, for the Teams manifest. So I think you can have two different manifests, right? Um, and the way you link them, I don't recall how you link it with Teams, but I believe it's different than how it's you could done. Probably, you could probably yeah. add them in different folders as well and keep the yeah. same name and just, because eventually uh, you're going to package them and upload it somewhere else, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think the difference also is the manifest ships with your application. So it's hosted on your server where the Teams manifest, you upload only to the Teams app. And there it doesn't ship as part of uh, your app. So, yeah, yeah, so you're not even linking to it from your from your HTML. Yep. Gotcha. And okay. I just realized people can't see the app because our faces are on top of it. That's but, right. Anyway. <laughs> I actually, there it, I is. there it is. I shuffled it a little bit so that we could see it. Okay, good. Oh, cool, cool. Well, look, Judah, I appreciate you jumping on. Apologies to the audio when you first came on it cut into our time a little bit. Hey, no section. worries. But um, a big work. thank you for doing that. That's awesome. And um, where's hey, the guys, best place for, for them to learn about PWA Builder then? What's the one-year-old's rule? Yeah, I, um, I would just go to pwabuilder.com and check it out. Uh, we also have um, a blog on Medium. If you want to check that out, I think it's like medium.com slash PWA Builder. But um, cool. yeah, go to the site, check it out. Um, and, and it's a great way to like get started with PWAs or turn them into apps in the app store too so awesome cool well thanks yeah. for coming i really appreciate it mate and we'll um, catch up in the future thanks everybody thanks judah okay bye -bye.